is there a sports gene or a, or a body type? Is that, is there? There absolutely are sports genes. And in fact, no single gene, but what we're learning, so just as kind of the medical genetics revolution showed that no two people respond to any drug the same way because of differences in their genes, we're finding the same thing for sports. So no two people respond to any training regimen the same way because their improvement is mediated by their genes. So we're finding that really people's biology is very specifically set up to profit from certain types of athletic training. Epstein debunks a notion many parents have long believed, which is that if you start your kids in a particular sport at a young age, they stand a better chance at excelling at it later on. It's called early specialization. I do think parents think when they look at their kids and they think, you know, Johnny's going to be a football player, let's start him when he's four years yeah. old. Is there value in that? So, so far the science, and there's more of it coming, shows that early hyper-specialization is not the normal route to elite athletic status. In fact, if you look at eventual elites versus eventual sub-elites, when they're kids, the elites actually practice less in their eventual sport. From Victoria, British Columbia, number 11, Steve Nash. So Steve Nash actually exemplifies what the most typical pattern to elite athlete status is, which is through about age 12, he had a sports sampling period, played a variety of things, wanted to be a pro soccer player, didn't get his first basketball until age 13, eight years behind me, right? Obviously did not hinder his skill development as he became, you know, one of the most skilled basketball players of all time. Then there's the so-called 10,000 hour theory, which is that if you practice and practice and practice for 10,000 hours, you'll be a star. Lots of people believe that too, not Epstein. You talk about training and a term that has had a lot of traction lately is this whole 10,000 hour rule. Yeah. Is there value in that? Is that, is that? Can you practice at something for 10,000 hours and then be that athlete? No, so that, that idea that, that 10,000 hours of practice will make anyone an expert in anything, um, no there's, no, there's no validity to that idea. If the idea is just that a lot of practice and, and quality practice matters, absolutely, that's correct. But that's not controversial, right? This 10,000 hours comes from a tiny study of violinists who were so highly pre-screened they'd already gained admission to a world-famous music academy, right? This would be like setting up a study trying to look at basketball skill by using only NBA centers, noticing they'd practiced a lot and saying that's the only thing that got them where they are, not practice plus seven feet tall, right? So absolutely, copious amounts of practice is important, but, but genes are important too, and finding the spot where you can make people the most successful with practice is really important. Epstein notes there are other applications for genes beyond how they shape the athlete you are or are not. He says testing of genes may reveal something else. You've hinted at it. So is there any, is there, is there like good gene testing or DNA testing or like what, what, what can be done? So what I think is, is one of the most important potential tests that's being mostly overlooked is the test for a gene called APOE4, a gene variant that actually predisposes people to not recovering well from concussions, for example. Uh. So these people, if they're in car accidents, they're more likely to die, to have brain bleeding, bruising, less success with rehab. You know, and this is, this is a huge conversation in hockey and in football now. And, and we know these people just have more trouble recovering from concussions, more likely to have permanent damage. Now that's something that you might actually want to know, even though it's just statistical risk information. And though Epstein's research focuses on human athletes, he says he learned a real lesson from four-legged runners, a key genetic trait when it comes to sports. In your book, you talk about uh, the Iditarod uh, dog race and desire yeah. and the desire in animals. We're animals, yep. you know, yep. that that's a part of it. How does that play into who becomes elite athletes. Yeah, so this is really interesting. So I, I knew when I was looking at the book that, that physical activity, training, alters our dopamine system, the pleasure and reward system in the brain. What I didn't know is that scientists who study this know full well that the reverse is true. Differences in our dopamine system setup make some people have sort of a compulsive drive to move, to be physically active, to feel rewarded for that. And that's actually what Iditarod dogs are bred for, right? Their speed maxed out years ago. Now the breeders breed them for the desire to continue to run and to do things like to continue to eat whenever they get a chance to. And some of these dopamine genes that you see in dogs and that we can model in mice are in humans also. So in, in other words, does that mean like for, for, for you know, these dogs that just want to get out there and race, the, the, that same desire is in some 
kids, like young Wayne Gretzky, just wanted to get out there because he knew he was born to be that guy. Yeah, that in fact, those sense? cases like Wayne Gretzky or Tiger Woods, right, where, where clearly their parents facilitated a huge amount of practice, but the evidence is that they show this desire that the adult then responds to by forming the environment. And that's, that's how that usually happens. I mean, one of my favorite interviews from the book was actually on this topic with Pam Reed, a legendary ultra marathoner. And Pam, when I interviewed her, the day before she had just finished the national championship in Ironman triathlon in New York, qualified for Worlds in her 50s, and her flight out of LaGuardia Airport was delayed, and she gets so antsy sitting still, she'd stashed her bags and was running laps around the parking structure while I was interviewing her, the day after the Ironman national championship. So, you know, that's pretty extreme, but that's, those people are out there. Uh, super interesting. Thanks, David. Thank you. Appreciate it.